Um, hi everyone, um, Mark Schultz from Adobe and what I want to talk about is this kind of changing world of, of multi-channel and, and to begin with, it's kind of like on behalf of the technology industry, I'm sorry because life is just so much harder now from a content authoring perspective like before. I think we all remember it used to be, alright someone's talking at me, I'll write it down, I'll maybe type it up, alright then I'll press print, done, right? Or, okay it's electronic so I'll make a PDF. Okay, there's my quote, I'll put PDF in the presentation. Uh, and I'll send that out. Now it's, okay, we need to put it on the web, we need to make sure that it's accessible, we need to make sure that you know, people can read it, is it machine readable, is it you know, optimized for search, oh, and along comes mobile, so I need to think about that. I need to go out to uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, everywhere else. Now I need to build an app, and oh, there's probably something else that's being invented right now that we'll have to talk about in the next six months. So that's a challenge. So I'm going to start talking about how we can start to think about these multi-channel environments and how we can quickly author content for them and push it out and some of the things we need to think about. What you'll see is um, quite a range uh, of different things. So the good news is that some of it's um, existing technology that you may already have um, you know, in the office when you get back uh, later today that you can start using. Uh, and, and so I'll show some of those things as we go through. So, Quick question for you. How many people have a smartphone now? You know, okay. I was having a real technology challenge today. Um, iPhones? Androids? Blackberries? Windows? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. Um, so here's the challenge, right, is that we've been bombarded with these different devices and the expectations, you know, in the corporate sector, or around media, the way people are engaging, is just dramatically changing every, you know, every day almost. So people now expect to be able to go online and find a video that they heard about, find it online, watch it on YouTube. Uh, people expect to, you know, if they've heard about something on the radio, expect to go online and read in more detail. Uh, people expect when they're out and about to, to find the actual information they want at their fingertips. And you know, while we have the technology, the, the challenge is sometimes is that we have this, is that and this is I just picked Australia.gov.au as an example here, but we kind of tick the technology box. We say, can we look at our website on a mobile device? And the answer is absolutely. There it is. Okay? From a useful factor. What's the goal of the individual? And, and what I want everyone to start thinking about is context. What am I doing when I have a mobile device? What am I doing when I have a tablet? What am I doing when I have a laptop? What am I doing when I'm in, at a, on a couch, sitting there um, you know, watching the TV? And the context is something that's very, very important. So for instance, I'm going to talk about uh, one company, Intel. You might be thinking, well, why Intel? I think they have a really good story of how to do this correct. So this is their website. If you go there today, it's as simple as, what are you looking for, right? Because they thought about their users and they said, all right, when someone sits at a computer, they're doing research. They're actually looking for something. Let's make it easy when I go to the site to actually type away, find that information. When I'm on this device, what am I doing? You know what, they didn't go and do six months worth of user surveys. They actually looked at their analytics. They said, okay, We've got tracking on our website. We actually know where our page hits are. We actually know what people are clicking through. Let's actually look at that and do something with it. And what they actually did was they actually built a mobile site. So they built not just a mobile site for phones, but they built a mobile site for tablets. And so when people are browsing around now on one of these devices, they've got this very HTML5 friendly thing that I can swish around in. If you're interested, I can show you later on. Um, so I can actually go and explore, because maybe I'm just sitting on my couch killing time and I want to have a look at some Intel products. But when I'm in a store, and the sales guy's trying to tell me that I need the new Intel 5 core i6 7 blah blah blah, and I go, well I'm not sure if I really believe him or not, then I'm, then I'm more likely now in this age to get my phone out and start to query that. And if I go to the desktop site, I'm going to be pinching and zooming and trying to press buttons and do all these different things. Uh, for quite some time. So what I want to show you very quickly is the, the Intel experience uh, on their mobile site. So let's just go ahead and uh, escape that and bring up my camera. And we might just go ahead and... Alright, the lighting is not fantastic, but 
but we'll see how we go. So here's the site, first of all. So obviously the design is tailored for a mobile device, and I'll talk more about design in a moment. But they thought about the content. And, and as I mentioned before, I'm in a store, and the very first thing on the page, let's just make that a little bit clearer, says, you know, what processor is right for you? <coughs> just click all our focus, we might get that a bit clearer. And so I can click on that, and it says, all right, let's get started. It starts to ask me questions. It says, well, what type of gamer are you? Uh, moderate. Um, do you do photos and video uh, for fun? Uh, communication, yeah, do a bit of video chatting, multitask sometimes, get a recommendation. Now, I wasn't being served pages, pages, text. I wasn't being served all these different things. It was simply a few taps and I have some information there. And it says here, well, we, we recommend the i7 core, whatever it is there. All right? So think of that now in a government context. Whenever you have data and you want to make it accessible to people, go and have a look a, at your analytical data. Find out what people are coming to your sites for, what are they, what are they looking at, and you can even break it down and say, just show me the mobile users. Okay? You need some help with analytics. Um, come and talk to us, but you can even do it with some of the free tools out there. So that's, that's a quick look at, at, at how you can start to serve up those experiences. Let's have a look at how we can author this, because it's not just the design, it's also the, uh, the authoring, the content perspective. So I'm switching over here to, um, to Dreamweaver, and I'm not going to go through an in-depth tour, but one thing, first of all, from a design perspective, there's already tools out there that allow you to make the site work from a mobile device. So this is the same site. Just watch what happens if I make it a bit narrow. It automatically detects and actually says, you know, actually, let's change that layout. So that's the design piece there. So I'm looking on a large device, I get this design. I'm looking on a small device, I get something that's got very touch-friendly buttons. And that's one piece of the puzzle. Let's go and have a look. Um, at our authoring environment here. This is where we can start to think about the content itself. And where we can allow, not developers, but actually content authors to actually create pages from a mobile device. So I'm in a web browser here, and I'd like to actually go and change some content. So first of all, I'm looking at my site. Let's go and add an image. So I'll just go and drag and drop an image in here. And let's actually go and look at our <coughs> library that I've you know, I have a, uh, a list of objects here. I might just go and grab an image or let's do a search for, you know, headquarters. Here's the image. Drag and drop. Without the, the author even knowing about this, the system's taken care of, you know, this is going out to mobile, so let's actually get a small image. We don't have to go and open in Photoshop and, you know, crop it and do all these things. So we get really fast, um, you know, different versioning of assets, etc. And then I can go and add some text. And so maybe I'll go ahead and add uh, a piece of copy in here. And again, think about the, the time that we want to save. We want to be very agile when we're building a mobile site. So rather than creating things from scratch, we already have our main website. So let's actually go and grab some copy from there. I'm going to click on Edit. And I'm going to navigate now through my site, down into, in this case, the English site, the company pages, grab that piece of text, hit Select, click on OK. And now we've dropped some text in there. To actually get it out live to the, um, to the internet, simply click activate. It'll go through a workflow, make, uh, you know, get all the ticks and, and, and approvals, and then it's, it's live. Which means that we can be very, very agile now as far as getting content out really targeted to a device. Now, I mentioned design before. Content often plays into that fact. So you can see at the top here, I'm starting to navigate through different devices. So for the people who put their hand up for Blackberry, here's how that content will look for you. And I can already look at this and say, well, all right, is this the best experience for Blackberry user, just to see the picture? So maybe I'll actually delete for the Blackberry users the picture and move it down so they actually see the content up the top. Uh, how does it look for, you know, the iPhone user here? Um, I can see that works. And what happens if they rotate it and they get this? And, and gee, what happens if they're actually on an iPad and I actually quit Skype. 
Um, this is the experience I get as well. So you can um, you can really start to see the different environments, the different content, and, and serve that up without really knowing much about uh, the technology behind the scenes there. I'll come back to that in, in more detail in just a moment. So one of the things is, is really around serving content up that the content itself is created for the user and, and, and being tweaked. Now I mentioned that um, Intel using their analytical data, what they allow them to do is, depending on where people are interested, to actually move content around on their site. So right on the very front page, when I come back in here to my uh, browser, I can actually just go ahead and, and, and change the flow of the content. So let me just uh, rotate this now. I may just choose to delete this text box just for this, or maybe we'll just lose the picture. Uh, I have this list of, of sub-menus here that I can go ahead and tap and navigate through. Maybe there's something topical came up. So for instance, there's a, a flood or a, um, you know, some sort of uh, event. I can very quickly just go and create a new page. So let's go ahead and say create child page. Um, I'll say it's an event. We'll hit create. And then we can do what we did before. We can actually just go and grab um, in this case, an image. Uh, straight down in there, grab that there. Maybe go and grab the title for the page. All right, and you know, you get the idea. You can go and add more things. You know, what often happens is I've got information such as a PDF document that I want to make available. And that's sitting in some other system. So maybe sitting in my SharePoint system or somewhere else. And, and again, from a, uh, a workflow perspective, you know, the time that we spend every day is going into this system, taking it to my desktop, making a PDF, going over here, logging in, uploading, and then finally putting on the page. Here I can actually just switch over to my uh, documents panel here. And I can see all my PDFs, so there's one right here. I can go and grab that, and it automatically creates the link. It's actually pulling it live, in this case, out of SharePoint for me. So there's some real time savings there as far as being productive, as far as being able to really create a site, push it out live, hook into other systems without, um, again, without you know, ex extreme knowledge around web content, web creation uh, technologies. All right. The other area is around, well, I've got some existing content. So I'm using InDesign or, or some tool like that, and I'm using this type of device. And let's have a look at um, one of the documents that uh, was created recently. This is a, uh, a government document. And if I just go ahead and um, pop back to my camera. You can see my iPad here, and you can see a reflection. There's a, uh, a clean energy file here. If I just click view, this document is actually created in Adobe InDesign. And without any extra knowledge apart from you know, how to just group a few things, and I'll show you a couple of panels in just a second, I was able to change a print document into something that's very interactive. So for instance, I can uh, just go ahead and swipe that. So you can see I'm, I'm actually swiping uh, back and forth. I can rotate it, so as I you know, rotate the device there, uh, you can see that. If I um, come up here, we want people to really understand the intent of the messaging here. So, some people like to read, and that's great. People like me probably would just be a little bit lazy, so we've actually got some video content here. Welcome to the Clean Energy Future website. This website was created to... So you can see that we've actually pulled interactive content there, place it in design, push this out. Uh, very easily. And we can actually have interactive content in this form as well. So as I'm swiping to find out more about you know, the environment in this case, if I um, go ahead and swipe my finger, you can see it's actually interacting with the, um, the animation there to actually give me more detail. Uh, 